So we're back again with just another quick look in this box. Um, we're not going to go to town like we did on the auto carriers version. Um, we're just going to look at some of the differences. So in here we've got uh, the sprue with the later tracks. We've got a few. Uh, we've got a bit of the stowage and the extra bits and pieces that are on this one that are, weren't in the auto one. And we can have a quick discussion and some feedback on how to get the track set up, which is one of the comments that was in the first review. So we can have a little bit of how we got to this point and a few of the build issues I've got to on the Auto Carriers mid, and also look at some of the new additions in this box. So these are the only different sprues. We've got a Y sprue, which is stowage. We've got A is actually already in the Auto Carriers box. But we've also got Sprue B, which is the later style tracks with the chevrons on the track. And we've got a repeat of F. Now, uh, what I didn't notice, and which I thought was the case, is because you get the two sets of tracks, you can do two full track runs. Well, of course you can't because you haven't got two sets of the guide horns. So uh, what you get left over is a whole run of... Um, tracks for this point of view this builds a mid and it only builds or only easily builds mid mids from the mid production and late production of the mid so therefore none that had the um, early tracks you get this whole set here spare and it would have been useful to have this set which is it would have been <laughs> this so this sort of doesn't make sense in the mid box these two sets of tracks would have made sense being in the auto carriers box and then in this boxing getting rid of these and just leaving it like that with the mid and late version of the tracks because you don't need the early tracks in this but anyway in the auto carriers box if you don't know what I'm talking about it's linked below and I'll have it coming up on the side that the auto carriers tiger is what I've already started building here and that has two options it's got a winter whitewash version of 217 which had uh, the later tracks with the chevrons on it and it's got the that's an earlier version of the same tank and then the later version of that tank when Otto Carius commanded it it had the early type tracks without the chevrons in that kit the only ones you get are the early type tracks you don't get the late type tracks so you can't correctly depict <laughs> Otto Carius's 217 from the early uh, version of it when it had the mid tracks on it there we go. But anyway, I could now. <laughs> so we'll just have a quick look through the instructions. So what we get new in this one, well actually this is the original, it's, it's Otto Karras's one that's the addition to this. But what we've got different to that review is Sprue Y, Sprue L, which has got uh, different um, extensions. So the uh, towing, where the towing hook goes, uh, this is the more traditional one. And these are the front hole extensions. So on the Otto Tiger, it's got this kind of notched version. Got a notch taken out of it. And then this one is the more traditional mid, which is straight down. So that would go like that. Uh, so that is one piece. We've also got Sprue Y. And this has the... Uh, ladder, the canvas cover for the cupola that we'll get to in a minute, canvas cover for the muzzle brake and the machine gun, and then a bit of canvas to drape over the top of the turret, a few other miscellaneous bits, and a piece of um, wood. Now, unfortunately, uh, this is as good as it is to have the umbrella, and this went over the turret cupola. I've even got a picture of it, actually, in this very good book by uh, Gents, Thomas Gents, just as what we were talking about. This is Otto Karras's Tiger before it was uh, his. So this is it in a whitewash and you can see it's got the cleated tracks. Maybe not on camera, but if you look at the photo you can. So here we can see it very well. It might not be clear. You've got the edge down here, it's very square. This, is molded at an angle point there and a point there so when you put it in it goes like that over the turret which isn't correct so where it goes over the cupola it should go like that where Tacom have got it molded it goes like that if you see what I mean this this straight bars between the two bits 
So, I mean, it's very difficult to make use of it in the correct way. Obviously, you can put it on like that and, and be done with it, and that's absolutely fine. But if you want to put it on the right way, uh, it should just go straight across. It should just, it should go like that, straight across. But the poles should be in the center, one there and one there. And that line there should be across there. So just something to bear in mind. You would see it used occasionally. I mean, I wouldn't use it. I wasn't going to use it. I'm still not going to use it. A little bit gimmicky, but I've, there's a couple of photos in this book that, that's got it and show it pretty clearly. Uh, as I've got it open, one other thing to show you as we're on the um, we're on tigers and tracks in sp specifically. Just so you know, when someone tells you that you can have this and you can have that, there's always an exception to the rule. Just like Otto Karius's has early tracks on a mid vehicle, this seems to be an early vehicle with mid tracks. We've also got, I'm pretty sure this here is a mid and they've got early tracks. This looks very much like a mid because it's got the wider pattern on the turret and it's zimmerated and you didn't see very much zimmer on early's although it did happen and then quite remarkable is this shot this huge shot of a massive girt blooming early tiger no zimmer it early features early mantlet all of that look at that for a modeling feature that one track that's not quite right so you've got all the earlies and because they just didn't have a link and all they've got is these ones with cleats don't make any difference it's not like you're going to feel it in this thing and they've stuck a cleated one in the middle now it's that sort of thing that can make for a very interesting model and also get you disqualified from the competition so with all that said unless you're um absolutely desperate to use this and again just use this as a template uh it looks absolutely fine but just make it so it goes across there that's all so instead of going like that it goes like that and it's fine having this is is brilliant it's nice to have all these extra little details so i really like that so we've got that piece and that piece they're different and then we've got the tracks and what we got here is cleats on the tracks as we can see so it's not flat there's a little raise there on the um track so that's very good. So that is the late track. As we're on the uh, subject of tracks, a couple of things were said in the previous uh, video on the construction of these tracks. Now it is a little bit tricky because you've got to glue in the guide horns, which is a bit awkward, but it really boils down to these individual links. Uh, so you put 10 in here, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, glue them together, put the guide horns in and people are finding them gluing to this that comes down to your glues and that's where you need your different sets of glues so ignore the tops i've got yellow which is the quick setting green which is the tamiya extra thin and quick setting then we've got this which is tamiya cement it's totally different that is what you need to use for this and you'll find the tracks will glue to themselves and they won't glue to this because it's not it's um watery it's a bit thicker and it won't run around and it will glue your run of tracks together enough to use this jig poke them out get them down then you can flatten them down use your tamiya extra fin and all is well uh, i wouldn't suggest putting the guide horns in when they're in here because they don't it the tracks don't sit flush in here they they sort of go up and down so when you put your run of guide horns on you'll find they don't sit flush so like four or five will be glued flush and the rest won't so uh, i would suggest tacking them with your white glue now it doesn't need to be tamiya you can use anything it's this sort of glue so there's the citadel version there's the revel version it's anything that's an actual glue and what it's doing is bonding the plastic together and the glue is holding it together whereas this runs in and melts the plastic together and it's the melted bond of the plastic that cements the two things together so uh that's one thing i found and i did do it with extra thin and sure enough i glued all the tracks i couldn't get them out um when you do your run it's absolutely fine 
it's good. Now it is a little bit tricky with the guide horns but no more than anything else. Uh, in one evening I did this entire run and that's out of the kit box and like I said I put a Facebook post up. For £40 this kit comes with these. You can spend another £40 and get yourself a set of individual link tracks if you want. It's going to take you roughly the same amount of time especially if you've got to drill some of them out doing your metal tracks as it does just persevering and getting a nice run with this. I've filmed this completely and we'll see that in um, in the build video. I'm just building up this uh, Carrius uh, version and I'm fast approaching getting a hole, getting the whole hull together. Uh, another thing I would suggest as well is gluing all of this to the underside of the whole, uh, whole roof rather than into these points in the middle here which if you do that it doesn't sit that well uh, the reason is really that these parts want to sit into a recess underneath here they, there's a recess all the way under here if you glue it into the section in this whole tub it's slightly misaligned um, so when you put it on you can get it to lock in but you kind of got to wiggle it and then it, it floats up and it doesn't sit flush you sort of having to bend you having to bend this down whereas here you can see it sits flush with no pressure it's fine whereas if you do it the other way it sort of wants to sit like that but you can push it down other than that i mean we're coming together no problem all these parts are the same so i've got the rear of the hole there there is a little bit of a issue I won't know until I've got it together. I'm just about to get the sides of the, the zimmerated side plates on. But there's a little bit of an issue where these two parts meet here. So the join's fine, but we've got a little bit of a raised bit of the back. And it shouldn't be there. But I think all I'm going to do is just, once we've got it glued in, just sand that down. It should just angle down and be flush at that point. It shouldn't be a lip. And also this here. I haven't tried this. I'll see if I can manage it. Should tuck under the side panels here it's all a bit Ooh, are we in yeah so this i haven't got it on there but there's a there's another section here that it just needs to sit underneath this it needs to tuck into there it can sit up i haven't got the section on but there's a section that goes here i'm just hoping it's going to sit and underneath there so couple of things to watch for once that's all done i mean we're talking typical stuff it's not a tamiya kit but it's far more detailed and there's far more options than that so with a little bit of uh straightforward construction it's coming together nicely and it's fine you can see once you get your hole in it's sorted it's not a problem and again just specifically for this type i'm having a look i think we're going to use the unzimmerated version of the um cover over the gearbox there because the reference seems to show that that is what was used as you can see it's coming together nicely uh, i can already tell this is going to be my go-to uh, kit for the tiger going forward uh, i just like the way the construction's broken down i like how everything fits i'm very pleased with it so far he says as he cannot get this to clip in there you go there you go i like the detail that's straight out of it i like the fact that the tracks are correct and all of that and it's very good oh i've got sprue notes um but yeah so i'm very happy with this and i'm going to stop messing around with this now and making it look like it doesn't fit i'm going to go on and get some more building done so that is the mid tiger the last thing we've got to check just while we're there just quickly is ooh, is the marking options a lot up there oh goodness me it's all sticking to me isn't it? uh so we've got Eastern Front, 132. We've got Italy, number two. I think this is, again, this is in this book. It looks like it's the section where they're replacing tracks or wheels, I think. Yeah. So it looks like it's that one. So we've got nice shots of it all the way around. Um, just point on um, David Burden's site, just pointing out that it's the smaller jack. Seems to be on here. So it's just one thing to think about if you're going to do that one. I think I'm going to be going for this one here, which is uh, around Mons in Belgium. Just like the look at that white 342. But um, not decided yet. So they're the marking options. All of them 
should have the latest old track. There we go.